Hi, I'm Andrea. This is Crafty Little Things. Welcome <clears throat> to our first um, crochet tutorial. And I'm going to show you how to make this little cute pumpkin pin cushion. Um, you need some orange yarn. I'm using a DK. Um, you need some a little scrap of green for the um, little stalk. Some scissors, a yarn needle and a three and a half millimetre hook. I'm going to be... Um, crocheting single crochets into a magic ring um, and that's US terms so they're doubles in UK terms. If you don't know how to do a single crochet, if you don't know how to make a magic ring, if you don't know how to crochet, go and check out my Absolute Beginners series and work your way through it from 1 to, I think it's 1 to 10 um, and you'll have, and once you've work your way through it and practice everything you'll have all you need to know to be able to make this you'll also need a bit of stuff in sorry I forgot about that right so to make the magic circle you put your yarn over your two fingers wrap the yarn around cross it over hook under the first strand pull through the strand underneath pick up from that strand that was a disaster wasn't it Yarn over your two fingers, cross it over and wrap it round, put your hook under your first strand, pull through from the second strand and then pull through another piece from the second strand through the loop on your hook and let it all come off your fingers and there is your magic ring. I'm going to do one um, chain just to lock it in place. Now just so you're aware, this is your working yarn this is your straggler and this is your circle, okay? And this is the loop on your hook. So let me just zoom in a little bit. I don't want to zoom in too closely that you can't, that it just becomes a confusing mess. So yeah, so this is the circle. This is where we're crocheting into and this is our working yarn. And essentially what we're doing is, if you just hold that straggler out of the way, we're just pulling yarn through from the back to the front to lock it in place. That's all we're doing. So when you do your single crochet into the circle, you put your hook into the circle. I hold on to the loop on the hook. You grab some of the working yarn and pull it through the circle. And then you grab more working yarn and you just pull it through the two loops on your hook and that's your single crochet into the circle. Okay, so you put your hook in grab some working yarn, pull it through, grab some more working yarn and pull it through the two on the hook and that's two single crochets. Hook into the circle, grab your working yarn, pull it through, more working yarn and pull it through the two on your hook. That's three. Into the circle, grab your working yarn and pull it through and that's four. That's five. And six. And then once you've got your six, just pull your straggler. One good thing about the magic circle is you get a really nice tight finish, um, which is really useful if you're making hats or whatever. And then just count, remember this is your loop on the hook, it isn't a stitch, but your stitches are here and you can count them by the little V shapes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to just pop my hook into the sixth stitch and I'm just going to pull some yarn through and pull it. I'm not going to yarn over, I'm just going to pull it straight through the loop on the hook and that's a slip stitch and again there is a video on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and in my pattern these um, chain ones don't count as stitches and I'm going to go into that same stitch, so that's the same stitch we slip, slip stitched into, I'm going to put my hook in, pull my yarn through, two loops of my hook, yarn over and pull it through the two loops and I've done another single crochet for the next round. 
and then I'm going to make another single crochet in the same hook in the same stitch so exactly the same space I'm going to do exactly the same thing so I've got two stitches in that one stitch and this is called increasing so I'm going to put two stitches in every stitch around so that I, I now go from six stitches in my first round to 12 stitches in my second okay so I move to the next stitch push my hook in pull my yarn through got two loops in my hook yarn over and pull through two go into the same stitch grab some yarn pull it through yarn over and pull through two and that's my two stitches in that stitch now I'll move on to the next stitch hook in pull through yarn over pull through two and repeat it okay and remember you're going into the two you're going underneath the two little parts of the stitch there yeah get under both parts of those that stitch pull your yarn through yarn over pull through two put your hook in yarn over pull through two okay next stitch hook in grab some yarn and pull it through yarn over and pull through two hook into the same stitch grab some yarn and pull it through yarn over and pull through two into the next stitch grab some yarn and pull it through yarn over pull through two next stitch I mean same stitch and yarn over and pull it through now you should have 12 stitches I lost count there but I think I had 12 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. So your 12th stitch there, you just pop your hook into, pull some yarn through, pull it straight through the loop on your hook, and you've got now got 12 stitches in your circle. And once you've got the hang of this, this is all this this is all you need to know. It's it's as simple as this for now so we do a chain one and this time what we're going to do is we're going to put our hook into that same stitch again so the hook where we did our slip the, the stitch where we did our slip stitch pull some yarn through so we've got two loops on our hook yarn over and pull through two so we've got one single crochet in that space in that stitch and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to do two single crochets in that stitch so that's two in there so that's three in total now now we're going to move on to the next stitch and we're just going to put one single crochet in there and then the next stitch we're going to put two single crochet in and this is the pattern we're going to follow all the way around to the end until we have 18 stitches so one in the next and two in the next one two one in the next and two in the next I'm not going to go through um, the stitches every time now because um, one in the next because you should have got the hang of the single crochet by now and two in the next one in the next and two in the next and you should finish on two you don't want to be finishing on one because then you know you've made a mistake and now you should have 18 stitches Remember how I said to count the stitch? If you looked at the beginner series, it's by the little V shape. So this is the chain on the hook. It is not a stitch. This is the first stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 
So this is our first stitch. So I'm going to go into the stitch and I'm going to pull some yarn through and I'm going to make a slip stitch. So there we have 18 stitches around. And now what we want to do is chain one. See, even I find it a pain sometimes. Let me just grab my... Sometimes if you um, do you lose your yarn like that, it's best to just pull down a stitch and go back. So, here we have um, 18 stitches. So we're going to increase now to 24. And how we're going to increase to 24 is... We're going to single crochet into the stitch we're in. So that's one. And we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. That's two. And then we're going to put two into the next. So that's three. And that's four. Now, for mathematicians out there, you'll figure out that we're going round in rounds of sort of six. We started off with six, then we went up to 12, and we went up to 18, and now we're on 24. And we sort of have six patterns of stitches. So we had six patterns of one in one stitch and two in the next stitch, so sort of six patterns of three. Now we're on six patterns of four. So we have two... We have one in one stitch, one in the next stitch, and then two in the next stitch. And we'll repeat that six times. So, And you'll find in crochet that you do repeat patterns a lot. And when you're making a circle or a ball or starting a hat or something, you often do have this, you see this six pattern repeating. So it is one to, to get used to. And one of the reasons why I've used this as one of the first projects so pop your hook into the next stitch, bring the yarn through, yarn over and pull through two, into the next stitch, do another single crochet, and then in the next stitch you do two, because that's your pattern of four. And then in the next stitch you do one single crochet, in the next stitch you do one single crochet and in the next stitch you do two and again that's your pattern of four and some of the ways I use to keep track of what I'm doing is now I know that I've got um, three patterns of four so I know that's half my round done so I've got three to go you also know that if you're um, counting your stitches around um, like I've got 12 stitches around now I know if I had 13 stitches that that's not a multiple of four and um, that's not divisible by four so I know I've made a mistake somewhere so it's it's really useful to keep the figures and the numbers in your head it's difficult to do when you're talking um, or when you're distracted but when you're working on your own it, it's much easier to do what I'm going to just show you now is I'm going to do the next a single crochet in the next stitch and in the next stitch and then I'm going to do two in the next stitch but I'm going to tell you how I'm what I'm thinking while I'm crocheting so I'm on 12 here so I'm on 13 14 15 16 17 so I know that's four fours, so I know I'm right, so I know I've got two to go. And that's what I'm thinking, because I know I've got four of my patterns. I've got My pattern contains four stitches in each section, and I know I've done four, so I know I've got two to go, because I know I've got six in total. If that's really confusing for you, I'm sorry, but if you're sort of a little bit of a numbers person, you'll kind of understand what I mean. Um, so I'm going to do a single crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch and then two into the next so now I know I've got 20 
and I know I want and I know it's four the pattern has four stitches to each section so I know that I've used five of those up because 20 divided by four is five so now I've got one left to go and I know I'm on track because I know that that 20 divides by four okay so then one into the next and one into the next and then two into the next sorry I let, I let my yarn run out One into the next and two into the next and that will bring you to your 24. If you don't understand what I was talking about when I was rambling about numbers just ignore it um, but if you do then it will help you in the future to keep track because like I say you will use a lot of this sort of repeating pat six patterns then just do a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and then we have our 24 okay so just one chain chain one to secure it i've cut my nails down because i had them done quite long for a reason and they're all kind of a bit jaggedy at the minute so they're getting caught and things right so here we go again now we're going to increase again from 24 we're going to increase to 30 now we can do what we've been doing, you can pull that little straggler any time to bring that circle in in the middle. We can do what we've been doing and do one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet and then a, and then two into one stitch um, and that will be six rounds of five if, if you follow that. You've got your one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet and then two together. So you'll have five in your uh, section and then we'll have six of those sections which makes 30. But sometimes what happens is you get more of a hexagonal shape to your work than a circle. So what some people like to do is alternate. So they'll put their double in first, their increase in first and then do and they'll alternate that around and that's what I like to do. So I'm going to put into this first stitch, I'm going to put my hook in, pull my yarn through, yarn over and pull through two and I'm going to do that twice in that first stitch and then I'm going to single crochet in the next, just one time in the next three stitches. And what this does is it keeps it more round in shape rather than letting it go off into this hexagonally type shape okay so i've done two single crochet into there and then one into each of the next three and that's five stitches and now i'm going to put two into the next one which is seven stitches can't even see where i've put it and then one into each of the next three for 10 stitches in total. And then two in the next one, which gives me 12 stitches in total. And then one into each of the next three, which gives me 15 in total. two in the next one and one in each of the next three which gives me 20 in total two in the next and one in each of the next three 25 in total, 2 in the next, one in each of the next three, Thirteen total, 
and slip stitch into the first of our round. So now we've got 30 single crochet, okay? And now we're going to increase that to 36 again. Six is coming to play. So what we're going to do this time is, you've got it, we're going to do a chain one and into the first one we're going to put a single crochet, one, one into the next, that's two, one into the next, that's three, one into the next, that's four, one into the next, that's five, and then another one into that same stitch, which is six. Okay, so four and then two into the fifth stitch. One, two, three, four, and two into the next one. And that's 12 stitches altogether. One, two, three, four, and two into the next, which is 18 stitches. So we know we're halfway there. One, two, three, four, and two into the next, which is 24 stitches. Pull off some more yarn. And then one, two, three, four, Make sure I didn't miss one out there. And two, which is 30 stitches. And so we know we're on our last little set of six now. One, two, three, four, and two into the last one, which gives us our 36. And now you can see much more clearly when you're at the beginning and the spaces in your stitches are a little bit easier and you do your slip stitch into the top of your first one and you've got 36 and the thing the thing is that I think the first couple of rows of crochet are always the hardest and then it gets easier but obviously when you're learning you want to you've got to get past that difficult bit to be able to enjoy and realise how easy the rest is. So why I did my Absolute Beginner Series was so that people could practice and practice and practice and practice and get used to that early difficult bits. And then, you know, hopefully that would get them over into the um, easier, more enjoyable parts. So you can see this is what we've got going down so far. So we're going to do one more round of increasing so we're going to do our single chain and again this time we're going to put two single crochets into that first stitch and this time we're going up to 42 so we want seven stitches in our section and six um six sections so that's two, one, one in the next, one in the next, and one in the next. So you've got two and then you've got five. Sorry, and one in the next. I'm just going to have to find out what's wrong with the dog, just one. Sorry about that. I could just hear the dog barking. I wasn't sure whether there was somebody out there or not. 
Oh, he's just come and shook himself all over me. He's wet through. <laughs> oh, the joys. Right, so we're on to seven here. So, hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Put those two in the same one. And then we have five in each, one in each of the next five stitches. Three, four, five. And I'm going to just really zoom in close so you can see exactly what I'm doing just in case you're not 100% sure. So I'm putting my hook in there, pulling my yarn through, yarn over, pull through. Hook in, pulling my yarn through, yarn over and pull through. That's two in, that's the increase. It's two in that one stitch. Hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through, hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through, hook in, yarn over, pull through, hook in, yarn over, pull through, and I think that was my two, yeah, one more, hook in, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so I'll do that one more time. Hook in, over, into the same stitch. And then five, one in each of the next five stitches. I'm not holding my work as I would normally hold it because obviously I'm having my arms stretched out to do this. You can slow this down, whatever you want to help you, okay? So I'm just going to speed up again and we'll go at a normal sort of pace. So that's two and then one in each of the next five. And then two in the next, and one in each of the next five. One, two, three, four, five. And then this is our first stitch. We're going to top of that. Pull through and pull through for a slip stitch. Okay, and that's it. And that's how <coughs> you not only say this pumpkin, but it's also how you start a lot of projects in the round. You could, I mean, that could go on to be a coaster, it could go on to be a hat, it could go on to be all sorts of things. So now what I'm going to do is we have 42 stitches, yeah, and this, in case you are not very good at keeping count you might want to use a stitch marker at this point um i'm gonna i've done did i do my oh, i'm gonna do my single quote my my chain just to hold it and then this is my first stitch okay so i'm gonna put pop a single crochet in there and then what I'm, I do is I just put that, put my stitch marker into that first stitch, yeah? If ever you want to stop working, just pull up a big loop so that you don't lose, pull down your work. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sew 42 around... for four um, rounds, okay? Now this is where you might want to use something to count your rounds, especially if um, you're 
likely to get distracted. So if you've got children or you've got people coming around or you've got animals or whatever, you might get distracted. So you might want to do something like this. You could use a counter or you could do this. I just lay down four pieces of yarn or I use four pebbles or something and I know each time I finish a round I just take one away okay so we're just going to do four rounds of single crochet I'll do the first round with you and then I'll leave you to do the rest by yourself so we've done that first one and we'll count them round if you want so number two yarn in uh, sorry <laughs> right that was two right here's three hook in pull through yarn over pull through two yeah that's three hook in pull through pull through two four hook in two five six seven eight Nine, ten, Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Now twenty-one, because we're going for forty-two around. <coughs> you should be opposite your stitch marker. Just want to use that as a bit of a gauge. Um, sometimes when you're making a pumpkin, you could put some increases in here to get a more oval shape. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to complicate matters, but. To get an even better pumpkin effect that would be advisable um another thing is i'm just going at a moderate pace here so if you can try and get up to this kind of pace then you're doing well um obviously if you're going faster than me use me as a little rule of thumb if you're going faster than me then you're doing really well um if you're an experienced sewer you'll you'll have finished the four rounds by now <laughs> um so, you know, hopefully this is sort of suitable to uh, most abilities. So we're going to carry on now. We've got 21, Eight, Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, and forty-two. And then we're going to go into the top of this stitch here. Oops, go into the top of it. I went into the side of it. At the top of the stitch where the stitch marker is, pull through, slip stitch and chain one to secure it. So we'll take one of our little pieces away because we've made one round so far. And then we'll take our stitch marker and move it up. What I'll do is I'll do my first single crochet there. 
and then I'll just pop that in there. Okay. So what you want to do is three more rounds and you'll find that your work starts to curl up and that is exactly what you want, so don't panic. So I'm going to leave you now to do your three rounds and then come back, um, pause the video and start it again when you've finished your three rounds, okay? Okay, so welcome back. Um, I've done my four rows um, of 42 and now what we're going to do is we're going to start to decrease. So just like we increased by putting two stitches into one stitch, when we decrease, we turn two stitches back into one stitch. And we're going to decrease in exactly the same way we increased. So our last one was um, five single crochets and an increase. So this is going to be a decrease and five single crochets. So how to decrease is, I've got to the end, I've slip stitched and I've chained one. You put your hook into your first stitch. You pull through some yarn and you don't do anything else. And then you put your hook into the next stitch and pull through some yarn. And you've got three hooks, three loops on your hook. Now you yarn over and pull through. And then you've just got one stitch there that's brought those two stitches together. So that's your first in decrease. So that's one and then you'll have your five um, where you just put one into each of the next five stitches. So five single crochets, one into each of the next five. And of course that's then brought that down from seven to six, okay? So our stitch count at the end of this round will be 36 again. So just show you again, put your hook in, pull your yarn through but don't do anything else. Put your hook into the next stitch, pull your yarn through. You've got three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And now you do your five, one into each of the next five stitches as normal. One, two, three. four, five. And now what you've got is um, 12 stitches in total. And then again, hook in, pull through, don't do anything else, hook in, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. And then one into each of the next five. three, four, five. So now you've got 18, so you're halfway round. Do it again. Hook in, pull through, hook in the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then one single crochet in each of the next five. Three, four, five. Hook in, pull through, hook in the next, pull through, yarn over, pull through and one in each of the next five. Three. Get some more yarn. Four. Five. And then again Last one, hook in, pull through, hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, 
and then one in each of the last five. Two, three, and find it very hard to see in this light. Four, five, and then we'll do a slip stitch into the top. that stitch and pull it through okay and chain one and now we're going to do the same thing we did before so we're going to have we're going to go down to um, bringing two together and then four two together and then four single crochets but we're going to do it the other way around again so we're going to do four single crochets and then bring two stitches together I'm just going to have to, I'll be back in Yeah, sorry about that, I just wanted to get a bit more light in the situation. <coughs> so we're going to chain, uh, we're going to um, crochet four That's one two three and four and then we're going to do our de decrease okay so you've got three on the hook and pull through so that's five so we'll end up with 30 stitches at the end of this so that's one single crochet in there one in the next one in the next, one in the next, and then a decrease, which is hook in, pull through some yarn, don't do anything else, hook in, pull through some yarn, yarn over and pull through all three on the, on the hook. I'm just going to release some more yarn. And now we're going to do another four. So one, two, three, four, and then a decrease. Four more. One in the next, one in the next, one in the next, and our decrease. Okay, so now we should have 30 stitches. So we're just going to check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, I need to do one more, I think. So one, two, three. four and a decrease okay that's brought us round to the beginning again right so now we want to take up we want to slip stitch into the first stitch and now we want to chain one and we want to do a decrease to start off with and this time it's a decrease and then three single crochets in the pattern so we put our hook in pull through hook in the next pull through yarn over pull through all three and then we do one single crochet one in the next and one in the next and then we do our decrease
and then one in the next, one in the next, and one in the next. And then we do our decrease and then three single crochet, one in each of the next three stitches. And there we're halfway around. So obviously we've got 24 in this round. Um, so we're going to do, I want to decrease, three single crochet, one, two, three, decrease, one, three and we're nearly there now we're nearly finished and then the final decrease and one two three And then join that together with a slip stitch and a little chain just to lock it off. So now we can see our little things taking shape. This is actually the outside. We're going to leave the straggler on the inside. Um, so you've got it. We're down to two. So we're going to single crochet two, one in one stitch and one in the next stitch and then we're going to do our decrease. So single crochet one in the next stitch and one in the next stitch. And then we'll do our decrease. One in the next stitch, one in the next stitch, and our decrease. One in the next, one in the next, and our decrease. And now what you can see is happening is our little pumpkin is starting to come together. One in the next stitch and there's our decrease. One in the next, one in the next. And our final decrease of that round. Okay. And now we're just going to slip stitch to the beginning of that. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to do. Oh, sorry. I, do you know what? I missed one out there. I've only done five. Yeah, so we're going to put one in the next, one in the next, and now a we'll decrease. And then slip stitch to the top of that. And then one, chain one. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do decreases all the way around. So I'm just going to put my hook in to that first stitch, pull my yarn through, put it into the next stitch, pull my yarn through and draw those together. And I'm going to do that 12 times. So one, two, three, 
two. After the sixth one, I'm going to stuff my pumpkin with stuffing and just grab some. I'm just using this hollow fibre. You can stuff it with yarn off cuts, you can stuff it with feathers, you can stuff it with whatever you want to stuff it with. I'm just going to pull that tight. And I'm just going to take a yarn needle and this straggler from the beginning, I'm just going to stitch this in. With a magic circle, you don't really need to stitch in your ends the same way you do with, um, with other means of starting because the magic circle itself kind of pulls things tight and it makes it unlikely that they're going to um, work their way loose. So when I just thread this closer to my face so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, yes, yeah, so it makes it more unlikely that they're going to work loose. But I'm just going to stitch it in a couple of times, just going to pull it through a couple of times just to make sure that it's nice and secure. That's all I'm going to do. And I would never cut that too short. So I'm just going to cut it like that. And then I'm going to turn it inside out because this is the right side. And then I'm going to leave my loop nice and long from my work. I'm going to have to leave it nice and long because I've somehow managed to get my thing through. And then I'm going to put my stuffing in. And if you put your stuffing in in small pieces, it helps you to get a better shape than if you just wadge it all in in one big chunk. So I'm just going to pop it in in little bits. Some people like to screw it up into sort of tight little balls. I, I don't. I like to keep it sort of loose. Um, put it in a little bit but keep it loose. And it is surprising how much stuffing you use. It's surprising how much crochet sh stretches. You don't want it to stretch too much because you don't want to show off you don't want to create gaps and you know see too much of the stuffing on the outside but yeah watch it in there get it nice and especially if you're going to use it as a um, as a pin cushion because you want it to be really nice and um, dense and think about you know that you are creating more of a a pumpkin shape than a an, an, an absolute circle but you still want it to be nice and full so that's going to make us a lovely shape you can always add a little bit more because you can see we've got a couple more rows to go yet so there'll be more space for more stuffing but we'll add a bit more as we go along so then put your hook back in pull it back through we're about edges and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing again I'm just going to yarn in and um, put my hook in 
pull through, hook in, pull through. I'm just going to continue with rows of decreases until we're nearly closed. And then once we're nearly closed, I'll finish off with a yarn needle. You could go for the yarn needle now if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do another round of decrease, just because I think it looks better. Can you hear the dog snuffling around? He's got a hot dog sausage that he doesn't like. And he's just throwing it around the room. I don't even know where he's got it from. He must have got it from some leftovers the other day. From when I was doing Halloween props. Okay, and then just keep on doing your decreases. All the way around. Just get a little bit tricky. Especially when I can't, when I'm not holding my work how I'd normally hold it. Because it's further away from my body than it would normally be. So yeah. Just keep on going around. This is better now, I'm holding it more like I would normally hold. Keep on going around and pulling through a loop, pull through another loop and then yarn over and pull through the more. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull through a good amount of yarn and cut off. So I'm pulling that working yarn through, okay? And then I'm going to see if I need to put any more stuffing in. I think we'll be fine. So I'm going to take my yarn needle. This is where, you know, the really big plastic needles. This is where they come in handy. Um, for this sort of project, but this will do. So what we do now is we take our our needle and we just hook it under and pull through. Whoops. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and pull through. So we're just sort of sewing things together. So we'll go th through like that and then through like that into the next stitch. Just pull it through. And this will just bring it all together nicely. So I sort of go sort of like weaving in and out just to pull it through. It's it's similar to the crochet stitches actually. So I just go under one and then under another. And just that's what I'm doing basically, but I'm just doing two at a time. And just bringing it together. So under and then under. You can carry on crocheting it until the end if you want. Sometimes I do. But I just wanted to show you how to stitch up an end. Right, now we're at the point where we can just cross over and bring the two sides together. I 
Okay, so we'll just stitch that end up. And then it's up to you which end you're going to use as your top or your bottom. I'm just going to go across there, just to sew those two sides together. And then you just, as you would normally with sewing, you just make a loop to knot off your end. But don't cut it off because you've got to make this into a pumpkin. So how you make this into a pumpkin is put the yarn over your thumb and push it straight through to come out where you began. So we're putting it through to the middle there. And I've just popped it over my thumb there. And then I'm going to pop it over my finger here and come back through very carefully because obviously it's going to jab me in the thumb and I'm going to push my needle back through and put it through that loop that I made with my thumb and then I'm going to pull it really tight and that's going to give me that pumpkin shape and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my yarn and I'm going to run it over like that and put it through that centre and bring it back out the other end just like that okay and then I'm going to do it in the opposite direction to get the other side of the pumpkin shape okay you see it's starting to take shape now but nice and tight and now I'll bring it over onto the other one to make sort of quarters. Keep pushing it through that centre so that you've got some uniformity going on. Keep it nice and tight. Push it through that centre. And this just makes your pumpkin shape really cute. Okay, and then I'm going to put it through that bit there. So you, you sort of just effectively dividing it into about eight sections. Oops. <laughs> okay, whilst squashing it down. And it's just a really easy way to make a pumpkin. You might, you might think you don't need eight sections. You might be happy with six. I think I'm happy with six there. What did I have on that one? I did have eight on that one. I think I might do another one here. This is going to be the bottom, I think. Um, when you're getting towards the end of your work, you find that your holes start to get a bit bigger in your work. So you might want to make that um the bottom yes why not I'm going to stick another one in there there we go now pull it nice and tight and stitch it off just by sewing it under the others and then knotting it off so I'm just sewing it under the others and then this loop here, I'm just passing my needle through that to make it nice and tight. And then I'm just going to pass it through to the top one more time and leave it hanging out. And then I'm just going to get some green yarn. This is a cotton yarn um, so it's a little bit different in texture to the DK but I only need a little bit of it so I'm only going to cut off a little bit of it and all I need to do is just make a slip knot and then just chain one two three 
four and then I'm just going to put a single crochet the second chain from the hook I'm going to put a single crochet in there one, one in the next two and one in the next three okay and I'm going to pull that yarn through and then I'm just going to tie it to the straggler from the beginning tie it nice and tight two knots maybe and then I'm just going to thread the longest longer thread on I'm going to thread it onto my yarn needle it's quite What I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it in down to the bottom so that's my little stalk and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to while I'm at the bottom I'm just going to because it doesn't matter if you've got a little um, patch of green at the bottom is I'm just going to push it through oh, and I'm just going to make a little loop of a knot down here I've got it sort of half stuck in and out and then I'm just going to cut that off at the bottom there you can just feed it through if you want but that looks fine it's fine to have that there and then I'm just going to tie my this is just especially if you're going to use these that kids use these you just want to make sure all your bits are sewn in well and out of the way and then I'm just going to use my hook and I'm just going to pull through these stragglers into the work and then slip them off it's up to you how you get rid of your ends but this is how I like to do it just to sort of lose them and there you have it your little pumpkin oh my goodness the sun's gone a bit crazy again hasn't it yeah there's your little pumpkin pin cushion um, I hope you found this easy to follow and I hope it makes sense. Um, it is the first demonstration I've done of a crochet project so do bear with me um, in terms of letting me get better. <laughs> um, 